behavior analysis, ABA as a treatment for autism. You know that I tell you all the time that there are people who think that ABA is robotic and that we should just leave the child in their own world and we shouldn't bring the child into our world. What what are your thoughts around ABA as a treatment for autism? We've tried a lot of interventions. I don't know if I'll mention them now, if I'm allowed to mention them, but <laughs> we've tried so many different things and none of them worked. None of them worked. We tried all the regular interventions and alternative interventions. None of them worked. And even we did ABA, but the ABA we did wasn't effective enough. It's only when we met Doreen and we tried the card ABA, that way of ABA, that we started to see results. It made the most sense to me. You know, it just made such clear sense and, and it was effective. You know? And yeah, like you say, progress is different for every kid. So you don't know where you're going to be at what time. But as long as you're moving forward and you're seeing results, um, it's very motivating. I remember when Doreen was coming to South Africa because I organized the Challenging Children Conference and Dr. Doreen Grabuchet and Dr. Bradstreet were going to present at the South African Challenging Children Conference. It's now been 15 years and it was really groundbreaking for South Africa because for the first time, professionals and parents in our country actually heard that autism is in fact a treatable condition and that there are some children that can completely recover from autism. Before that conference, I think it was very much popular opinion here that it's just a lifelong disability. It still is. People still think it's a lifelong disability. I think we're years and years away of changing that perception. Like I speak to parents every single day that come from the pediatrician, the neurologist, developmental specialist, and they are told they have the symptoms of autism. He's three years old or he's two years old, but I can't diagnose him now. Bring him back in a year's time. And when I hear this, I get so upset because early intervention is important. I'm now speaking to the parent. I'm not a doctor. They've been told by this doctor, you know, there's symptoms, but I can't give an official diagnosis. I'm listening to the story and I'm thinking autism for sure. And you and I both know that the sooner that child can receive the right interventions, the sooner you're going to get them onto the path to healing um, and, and the better the outcome is going to be. So like, why? Why is it this way? I think I asked myself the same question, but one thing that's just actually popped into my mind now is that maybe South Africans are um, unique and different in the way that they interact with other people. Maybe they're more kind, more caring, and scared to upset somebody. I think in America, um, they're much more forthright, much more forward. It is what it is you know, this is the way to do something and just do it. Whereas I think in South Africa, everyone's too scared to say anything. Maybe, maybe it's that, I don't know. You were talking about the right quality of ABA. And I, I remember when Dr. Grampisha was coming to South Africa and her office sent us a video and it was called Recovered from Autism. And I remember you watching the video because you were going to be in charge of um, all the, the technical parts at the conference and you wanted to watch the video before she came and her office said, look, you know, just include this in the presentation. We're going to play this at certain intervals when she's presenting. And I remember walking into the room and you were watching this video and I walked in and I will never forget what I saw because you were sitting on the couch crying. Do you remember that? I do. I do know that I don't remember much, but I, I do remember that. And I think immediately after that emotion, uh, being really upset, I became angry. And I thought to myself, well, what have we been doing? We've wasted so much time with this rubbish ABA program that we were on. We, we had ideas, we were just so inexperienced. We thought we were doing the right thing. And then when I saw what was available, they had been doing this for 20 years in America, and I thought, oh my gosh, look what we could have been doing. 
I just became angry and I said, oh, I've got to change this immediately. And, and we did. We changed it immediately. And it, it just made such sense to me. And I realized, shucks, uh, there's good ABA and there's bad ABA. And obviously what we were doing was not effective. And I'll, I just want to say another thing because I feel very strongly about this. Even within a good ABA program, it still requires an enormous effort on the part of the family to get it right. So you can put a child in an ABA program and the ABA program can be effective, it'll be great, but if the family itself isn't embracing and isn't following through at home and isn't doing everything they can to support their program, I don't think it's gonna be as effective as it should be either, uh, not nearly. I just saw the enormous amount of effort that you put in, especially you. I was in a supportive role, so I wasn't doing it like you were doing it. But you were motivating your team. Do you know, just take any employee. Um, yes, the people who work with the autistic kids, they are special human beings. The, the people that work for you at Star Academy, they're unique. They've all got psychology backgrounds. They're all like special individuals and they care a lot. But at the end of the day, they're still working for a salary and they're still doing the same thing over and over every day. And so it's your job as the parent to motivate your team. Yes, you can say it's your job as the head of the organization also to motivate. But I think the parents, are, if they're intimately involved, they know what motivates the child and they're going to communicate that to the team and they're going to try their level best to get the best team that they can for their child at all times. I remember we didn't waste a second on our ABA programs. Um, we, when we went on holiday, we were doing ABA. We, from the time we woke up until the time we went to sleep, we were doing ABA. It's not like send your kid off to an ABA program for two hours a day and it's gonna be okay. You have to sleep, breathe this stuff. You have to really be completely committed. And I don't think people realize that. People think that, oh, you know what, I'm gonna give it to the experts. And you know what it is, it's like dog training. I'm sorry to, to bring that up. You know, when I got a puppy, I thought, you know what, we'll go for two uh, training sessions at the dog thing, and then my dog's gonna be fine. Not at all. You have to keep on working it all the time. You have to be consistent. You know, you have to like put a lot of effort and only after a long, long time will you be able to get the results that you desire? I agree with you. No one cares about your child as much as you do because you're the parent. And so if you think you're just going to drop your child off at some program and everyone else is going to take care of it, instead of getting a program that could be 80 or 90%, you, you're going to be getting something for about 50, 60%. The parent's involvement honestly makes all the difference. Now, here's a hard question for you. Is ABA bad? Definitely not. I mean, it's, it's if you're doing the right kind of ABA, and let me give you a prime example. So Aaron, um, as you know, he loved every single minute of his program. For him, it was he was playing, he was happy, looked forward to it. For him, it was the most wonderful experience um, but I think you do get programs that give ABA a bad reputation. And unfortunately, that's it. And it's like in everything in life, I think you get good doctors, you get bad doctors. You know, you just get good and bad with everything. If you're doing the right type of program, it's good. If you're doing the wrong type of program, it's bad. So I have to ask your advice on this. Parent of a two-year-old. They've been diagnosed with autism recently. They've just started their ABA program. Child is crying and screaming the roof down. The cries are penetrating your heart. It's heart-wrenching. What do you say to this mother? Perhaps the child is just trying to communicate. Maybe the child's frustrated. Uh, maybe the child's in pain. There's so many things that could have inflammation. There could be so many reasons why this is happening. So I think you first have to identify where it's coming from, you know, what is actually going, uh, going on, how sick is the child physically. And then, um, you know, certainly if you, if you want to link it to ABA, things could get a little worse before it gets better. If I think of my personal experiences, 
I had two experiences. You know, the one with David was shocking. I, I hated the ABA that we started on. He cried and he cried and he cried. And my advice to parents is, if your child is going to continue to cry in an ABA program, then, then the ABA program is wrong. You need to stop that. There's no reason why the child should carry on crying. But after a short while, um, the child will realize that you know, he's using the crying to get attention, to get what he wants. If he realizes that he's not getting any more what he wants through the crying and there's a better way of communicating his needs and wants, then he'll rather use that instead. So a lot depends on the program, a lot. You know, if you have a good program and a person running it who understands what's, what's meant to happen, then the crying is not such a big deal. I think I know where you're angling with this is that, you know, if the child cries or should you run to the child immediately and and say, so don't worry, everything's okay, don't worry, please don't cry. Um, sometimes tough love is important because you know, long term, the child is just manipulating you and throwing tantrums because it's the only thing he knows how. You're correct because if there are skills deficit and they don't have an appropriate way to communicate their needs, the older they get, the tantrums are not going to go away. They've now learned to communicate through behavior. They're communicating through crying, screaming, biting, throwing themselves on the floor. Once we can give them an appropriate means to communicate in ABA, for the older kids, that can also be an iPad with a communication program. It can be so empowering. We're never going to give up on their vocal speech. But Mart, as you know, 